I've I've learned from my mom Mavis and um, also from others like Nola and um, there there was a older lady she died uh, in 1994 her name is Bernice Christian and she would tell a lot of stories here when she come to visit or when we visit her at home and her version handed down from her generation from the youngs and also she is a Christian by marriage as well and I can remember them talking even sometimes back to my great great grandmother um, would be telling stories about the bounty when it it arrived here at Pitcairn it arrived here on the 15th of January and um, they circumnavigate the, the island for two days, just looking to see if there's any signs of life here on the island. And they they waited for two days out there. And um, on the 17th of January in 1790, they found a place to come ashore and that place is down the landing down at Bounty Bay and um, they were able to come up uh, not the road that we use now but the the cliff across from the harbour there, there was a track coming up up there so they were able to clamber up uh, a track and um, come up on onto the flatter plateau which is now known as Adamstown so they're, they're able to um, um, see what they can do and, and set up a, a little village um, here uh, in, in Adamstown. Um, so th that's what what I've heard from my great-grandmother and, and from Bernice Christian. The, the story is that they came out of England and, and went to Tahiti to, to get the uru, the breadfruit to take to the West Indies to try and get the plant of the Uru and to take it there. But um, the time that they arrived in Tahiti in um, October, it, it was the wrong time to, um, to gather the plants and, and the first time that they, they gathered the plants, it um, didn't grow that well. And, and so they, they were in Tahiti much longer than they anticipated getting the, the plants for, for the trip to the West Indies. By then, with, with the, the English men coming into um, Tahiti and the, the people, especially the women, you know, um, they see the women uh, with their partially naked and of course well you know what you men are you know they they became very excited the clothing that that the Polynesians wear the Tahitians um, the clothing that they wear is tapa cloth and once tapa is is wet in the sea it falls apart so of course you know they got excited when they see this beautiful maiden come out of the water and all her clo clothes have washed away. Um, that's my version. And that's some of the stories I've been told. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so they, they, they form their tayu. Their tayu is the friend. The, um, the, the men of the bounty, they, they, they made friends with, with other um, Polynesian, especially the men, is is their tayu, their their friend, and then um, they also have the relationship with women in in the Tahitian community, and and so um, they they were able to to um, form these relationships, and when it came time for for Bly, to gather his men from from being ashore and take them on the bounty some of them already have have that close relationship and they didn't want to leave 
they they didn't want to leave the their Polynesian partners, and so um, when he finally ordered them on board the ship with a load of breadfruit, and um, in April of um, of seventeen eighty nine, when they were at sea, um, they they mutinied. One of the reasons we've been told is that um, some of the the crew on board the ship, especially Churchill, Matthew Quintal, uh, he's always a very violent person, and he. Um, was always getting into trouble and so he was getting a lot of lashes from the whip. Another one was Alexander Smith, known to us also as John Adams. He was uh, getting um, a lot of um, lashes and being um, told. Even Fletcher Christian, he, he was not lashed but he was told off by uh, William Bly on many occasions so I've been told and and so they keep thinking of their their sweethearts in Tahiti and they wanted to get so it was encouraged by Churchill and and um, Quintal and McCoy and for, for them to mutiny and um, they encourage uh, Fletcher Christian to take the ship. The The ship used to be called the Bethia and when it was um, chosen for this trip they restructured the, the ship and made it into a floating um, gardener, uh, garden mm. uh, and, and so that's why the Bounty Bell doesn't have the name Bounty on inscribed on it because of of it being named the Bethia, and they didn't have the the time to do it before she sailed for Tahiti, and I've heard say, and I've read it in a few books that when they finally got the breadfruit to grow, in um, where they were taking it, the slaves didn't like it anyway. Mm. Bly must have known too how to handle the ship and his um, men, although he was very strict, he made sure that they danced to the fiddler. He, he had the fiddler uh, who, was, um, who would play and they, they would dance for physical exercise and also he, he encouraged them to have the lime juice, the lemon, you know, to prevent scurvy, and um, uh, actually none of them, none of them died because you know a lack of um, uh, of his leadership with with the health. Yeah, he he made sure that they were were healthy. You know, some of some of the the sailors on board, um, not the officers, not people in the rank of Edward Young and uh, Fletcher Christian, um, some of the people on board, they, you know, they were, didn't really go willingly, you know, they, they were um, taken on board the ship before it sailed, and so when it sailed away they couldn't come back. That's what I've heard. Not all of them. Some of them have wanted to join the bounty because already you know they've heard about Tahiti and they want to go and see for themselves they they heard about the the generosity of the islanders on on Tahiti and in what we call now French Polynesia well i've i've um growing up i really didn't know you know, um, it wasn't really told pre um, what what the bounty um, did. You know, after the mutiny and after they went 
back to Tahiti and the men picked up, you know, they were able to um, get their women, um, Fletcher Christian and Mawatoa, they got married they, before they were on, came back on the bounty. But I, I've, I've learnt through others, especially a friend of mine who have researched quite a bit in the um, Tahitian history, uh, a little bit about um, after the bounty. And um, it, it was told to me, and I, I've also read in, in some other writings or, or whatever I can find. But um, after they left Matavai Bay for the last time, on board was not just Tahitians. You know, the story has always been told. It's Tahitians and Englishmen. Okay, it's not just Tahitians. There are um, chief son from Raitea, you know, one of the women, she's uh, from Huahine, Tu'ufa'iti. She is from Huahine. And um, they, they are, uh, Mawatua is, is from King Hidihidi. He's She's from the royalty when she married Fletcher Christian, yeah. Her other name is known as Maimiti. Yeah, that that's a most famous name that that she knows, um, is known by. So we we have Tahitian women. We have, um, we have on board. There were six Polynesians. There there was on board. There were six Polynesians, and um, they they were also. Um, from like right here from um, Tahiti in in the Arawe region um, in different areas of Tahiti because there were so many tribes and then when when they they left Tahiti they went to um, Tubuwai and landed on Tubuwai and they were there for some time before they came to Pitcairn. I think they were there for a, at least a good year in in um, Tubawai, but they didn't get along with the Tubawaiians. But when they left Tubawai, the chief's son was able to at the Hiti. He he was able to come with his wife, Tina Fonia. So they they were able to come from um, Tubawai on the bounty and um, and was able to come when when they were searching for Pitcairn. Everybody points at Fletcher Christian being the one who would navigate them to Pitcairn. On board they have the chief son from Tubawai as well as a chief son from Rayatea. These people are navigators. They knew that Hitiao River River exists. That is the name of this island before the British named it after Major Pitcairn. And so um, they knew Hitiao River River, which means the land far away, is here. They know where to come. And then when Christian realized with the map he had and when they were searching for it and that's when they realized that Pitcairn has been plotted in the navigational map in the wrong latitude and longitude. So when they found Pitcairn here, they knew they were safe for a little while because they knew in Tubuai they weren't safe. With the fort that they built and the, the, the Polynesians there would have killed them eventually. And then when they, they found Pitcairn, they realized 
they were, this was it. But still, they didn't realise, you know, that they can stay here with the bounty out there and be safe. So that's why they decided to take what they can because they need the sales. They need that to help put up the first homes. They, they need the nails. And one of the reasons they burned the ship was to get the nails so they, they can build the homes. And that's why some of the older homes that was here before have got bounty nails to hold it together. As I understand and, you know, the story that I believe um, is that because the the nationality of the English, the whites on board the bounty, is a mixture as well. They're not all from Britain. Isaac Martin is from the USA. Um, there, there's the Scottish. Um, there's um, there's Edward Young is from. St. Kitts in the West Indies. So there, there is a mixture. Fletcher Christian is, is from the Isle of Man. Edward Young is from um, St. Kitts, West Indies. Then um, with the different women as well, from Tahiti, Huahine, Raitea, Tubuai. That's different. And the men from Tahiti, Tubuai, and Raitea. So not not only uh, are the whites a mixed culture, also the the Polynesians are a mixed culture. Some some people have also said, and I'm not a hundred percent certain, that some of the women came to the on the bounty. Um they were invited on board and then when the ship sailed away, you know and they were crying for their homeland. Te Hutiatuo Noa is one example. Her English name is Nancy. She was first the consort or partner for John Adams. Um, on board the ship, on board uh, Bounty, when they were coming to between um, Tubuai and um, looking for Pitcairn. Because she's very, like me, very vocal, she says her point and to the point. Um, he traded, John Adams traded Te Hutiatua Onoa with Isaac Martin for Opuarai. And unfortunately, um, unfortunately for Isaac Martin, Te Hutiato Noa was always very, very vocal. She never had children, but she was the first of the Polynesians to leave the island on board the Sultan. Um, when when they were discovered, she she was able to go back to Tahiti, and then she she went to Raiatea. So she was the one who left. And it, it was her being interviewed that some of these earlier stories about the bounty, what happened after the mutiny, it was her being interviewed by others out there that some of these stories came about. Some people say, you know, Fletcher Christian, he was obsessed by this tale he read this story in a book. It was written by a captain. Nobody knows. And Christian, he was obsessed by this mystery. He got confused between fiction and his own reality. He told the story to the sailors and to his wife, Mawatua. This story is about a utopia made by pirates 
and indigenous people on the coast of Madagascar years before. Some say that's what really pushed them to the mutiny, but I don't know. I really don't know. From the history, it's been passed down through some families to from family to family but also some of the information I've had passed to me is from one of the monarchs of Pitcairn who passed away and she was able to tell her story that was told to her so Bernice Christian was able to tell us a lot about the history of Pitcairn that has never been written. The history passed down from this person. She told my mother quite a bit about the history of Pitcairn and about some of the Polynesian bounty people. But some say Fletcher Christian, he was obsessed by this tale. And he read this story in a book written by a captain who nobody know and Christian was so obsessed by the mystery he got confused and the fiction of his own reality he told the story sometimes to sailors and to his wife Mawatua this story about the utopia made by pirates and indigenous people on the coast of Madagascar many years ago some town that's what pushed him into the mutiny but i don't know i really don't know well if you ask my mother about this she can tell you going stole which means you'll tell a lie because she has never heard this story no because she's not going to tell me about madagascar or or the utopia or even the thoughts that um, Christian got in his mind about pirates and, and mutiny and, and things like that. But to hear someone say or someone tell that Christian is obsessed by her tale, it's fascinating. Well, well, what I understand too, um, it was only three years after they arrived here when the first of the mutineers were killed, and that was Isaac Martin. And so they, they were able to, um, um, before that, you know, what, what has really been in the community you know a little bit of attention because like for Pickern is here today you know it's a clear example we're, we're a small community we're like a family and of course each one have their own differences and because we're on a small island it is um, of course we have tension but we need each other to survive we need each other to help each other to do that and it's my thinking as well as some of my other colleagues that um, when they landed here yes there is a bit of tension between the English the American the St. Kitts the Raite and the um, Tubuayan the Tahitian the Huahinian you know there, there will always be a a difference of a, an opinion. It also didn't help because um, Matthew McCoy, uh, Matthew Quinto and William McCoy, I've got it right, William McCoy and Matthew Quinto, they um, they brewed up this grog from the root of, of the roti and so they were able to um, ferment this alcohol and make their own moonshine which is quite potent and um, so um, McCoy you know he he became obsessed with 
brewing as well as he drank a lot and he was so depressed that he jumped off the cliff. He tied a stone around his neck and he went off the cliff just um, before you go up to Fletcher Christian's cave. And um, Matthew Quintal was being a violent man but also with alcohol in his system. He was so furious with his wife, Tevaura, because she went fishing and she didn't catch enough fish for him to eat. He was so violent that he, he bit off one of her ears. Uh, but then, you know, the tension started and, and it got to where the women took charge and they, they um, all went out to Outer Valley and they built a fort and the women um, moved in there. They, they were like Tehutia uh, Tuonua. She was like the leader of the women, her and Mawatua. They were the leader of the women and they, they took them into the fort. And, um, and a couple of the Polynesian men, Niao Ohu, they, they came with them and, and protect them in the fort against the Englishmen. And, and so um, gradually some of the women wanted to go back with their, their partners and, and eventually, you know, they, they left the fort and, and came back to live with, with their um, consorts. But again, you know, um, they decided to divide the island up into pockets of land so that um, all of them can have a piece of land but they didn't give land to the Polynesians and right. with with two chiefs sons yeah with two chief sons Te Tehiti Taraura you know with, with these men who in their island they, they, they are royalty and to be asked to work in the gardens to go fishing you know it, it, the tension started there as well that that's a few of the things that that made, made the tension there was 12 women and six men nine sailors well before we got to the murder Upoarai was out gathering birds egg her her other name her english name is uh, Mariah and she was out gathering birds eggs and she slipped and she fell and she landed down rope she was killed down rope and um, and so John Williams wanted another another wife and so he went and he took he wanted Tina Fornia who is the Tubuwayan? He wanted a, her, and um, is it? I think a Tina, yeah, Tina Fonia. He 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 wanted her, and um, and so he took her away from from her Polynesian partner. There were three of them for the six men: Tina Fonia and her partner, who is the chief's son. And then there was Tua Faiti and Maeva. And um, so he took her away. And um, so, of course, that caused conflict. And the, the English were talking about, you know, um, trying to, to make the, the Polynesian men work in the garden more to pr produce do other things and the women are torn between the English or the whites and and their own and so they hear the rumor starting when Uhu and um, Niao and you know Manaui was one who who started to uprise that they will kill the whites and try and sail back to um, Polynesia, to French Polynesia. Then it wasn't French. Um, 
and so with that the war began and and the first four were killed and um Isaac Martin was the first and I think it was Fletcher Christian, John Williams and um John Brown. They they were the first four killed. And um Fletcher Christian was killed up in his garden up at um the flat. And um rumour has it he was buried under a tree there, a Mahami tree, and then eventually they they were able to move the body and bury it. There used to be a cemetery under the the hall. Why they build a hall over a cemetery, I don't know. But um, that that's what happened. It, it's sort of been instilled in the Pitcairn Islanders not to talk about it. Even in the early days, even in the days before they moved from Pitcairn back to Tahiti before 1831 and so the some of the facts are, are just you know we, we don't know exactly what happened it's just some of the stuff that has been passed on through um, the generations of what actually actually happened before the population grew to be too much. Some of these accounts are what um, Te Hutia Tua o Noa spoke to the press when she left Pitcairn on the Sultan and went back to Tahiti about the the first four men who were killed and some of it when um, they were discovered and, and um, John Adams was able to tell some of his story and um, a few things are a little bit of a conflict and the, the children of the bounty they were trying to preserve some of the stories um, but they also wanted to protect their monarch who is John Adams so that the British wouldn't take John Adams off the island and take him back to England. So he, so the children of the bounty tried to protect him as well. It, it was to the end where there was John Adams and um, Edward Young. Edward Young had become quite sick with asthma. And um, Edward Young died because of asthma, from an asthma attack. Before before Edward Young died, um, Matthew Quintal was becoming more of a problem, you know, and he, he was trying to grab the women and, you know, um, and he, he was drinking so much, he, he was really crazy. So it was uh, John Adams and Edward Young who decided that they would kill him and they, they cut off his head with the bounty axe. Yeah, they, they killed him with the bounty axe. And so that that was the last of the violent act here on Pitcairn. And then, then Edward Young died of natural causes. We're just going back to, you know, with, with um, after the mutiny, after, after they settle, after the ones um, who have been killed, um, or have fallen and died and, and then the society of Pitcairn, you know, it, it was small and then the children um, started to grow up and then have children of their own and it, it was when um, John Adams realised, you know, that he, he has got a small community that needs guidance and, and to help with that, um, the help he got from Edward Young to try and educate the children and also with with their um, Polynesian side, they've been educated anyhow to survive on an island like this and, and um, they know the dangers of 
of um, living on an island like this and they know what to eat, they know what to gather, they, they, they know the seasons, they know that um, water can be very scarce they, and all of that has been in our DNA, you know, it has come from there. It has come from the children of the bounty, their teachings. The language came from the children of the bounty. It's a mixture of, of English. It's a mixture of uh, West Indies. It's a mixture of um, Puahinian, uh, of, of Tahitian, of Tubuayan. It, it's all that mixture that have created this language we call Pitcairn. And um, now the Norfolk Islanders have called it their Norfolk language, which originated from the children of the bounty. From them, um, it's been passed down how to survive on this island, and also from the violence, you know, of, of turning this place into a very peaceful, loving place. And um, for that, I am grateful as a descendant that some of their teachings have been passed down to my my great 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 grandparents down to to my parents, and and they have taught me um, how to live and survive on our beautiful island. It's it's a place I would always want to be. I have visited many places in the world. Pitcairn is my home and you take the Pitcairn out of me, I'm actually, I would say I'm nobody because this is what makes me creative. This is what makes me write songs. This is what makes me tell the story. This is what makes me pound a tapa. And it also have turned me where I go back and try and make the same style of weaving that my four mothers have done. Um, John Adams, his his uh, he went back to to um, his religion that he grew up with, and and so um, Church of England was was their their um, religion. And, and so that, that's what the, the children of the bounty were taught and that in, in their religion what, um, what they would practice. And um, because he, he was taught by Ed Young to, to read and write and he was able to use the Bible of Fletcher Christians to um, teach the children a lot about the the verses of um, and the meaning of of the Bible. So that that was his tool, using the Bible and prayer book as as a tool for the school for teaching. And then eventually some of the other children they they were able to teach the other one. And then they left they left Pitcairn because the population had grown. And they left and went to um, Tahiti. In downtown Papi'eti, there's a house. I've, I saw it um, in February. The, this house was given to the Pitcairn Islanders by Queen Premier, um, so that they can they can live there, have a place for them to live. In in Arua, um, there there is a a um, stone monument just outside of Queen Pemere's, um family burial plot that is put there to commemorate the the pit kerners who had died in Tahiti. They didn't like it in Tahiti and even some of the, the Polynesian women came back like Mawatua who was born in Tahiti, she came back to the island um, after their short stay in Tahiti. One of the reasons they didn't like it, they became very sick 
with all the influenza, you know, all the things that, that was going on there in Tahiti. They came back, their homes were ransacked by shipwrecked sailors who had shipwrecked on Oino Island, who have come here and have used some of the, the houses and of course the precious bounty nails to make a ship for them to, or a bigger boat for them to go off the island. Um, and so it, it's been um, where when they came back to the island they've been trying to make things peaceful again and a very functional island that would work for everyone. And then all of a sudden um, this Joshua Hill, you know, he, he came in and became almost like a dictator and and started to change their way of of um, lifestyle the teaching in the school was different and um, they have to do this this and that and he almost dictated that the islanders have to be working for him everything is for him and, and so by then a lot of ships have been coming back and forth um, passing through Pitka and stopping the bounty story is out there and um, they're, they're able to to um, some of the Pitka earners have been able to travel you know um, even as far as England and, and America and and have been doing their their stories or, or and, and stuff like that so when the Pitcairn is starting to feel the pressure of outside influence from um, Joshua Hill, they were able to write to the authorities in, in England and ask um, for help. And so he was physically removed off the island. Nowadays, I, w I would say I am a Pitcairn Islander. I, I'm... Um, my nationality is a British Overseas Dependent Territory. Um, I'll, I'll have to say yes, the nationality is British, but I am a Pitcairn Islander. And um, I, I feel pretty strong. I, I don't feel like I'm a British citizen, like in Britain itself. Because of Joshua Hill, and others who have started to do the same, who have come uh, onto the island, um, the Pitcairn Islanders then um, asked Queen Victoria for help. And um, the when, when the Pitcairners came from Tahiti, they had just landed when the French um, naval ship was coming in otherwise we would be speaking the same language as you we could have been a part of French Polynesia as well so the Pitcairners who are um, descendant also from Britain you know they they um, they ask Queen Victoria for help and when they saw the topaz coming in, they have lookouts. That's why that point up there is called Ship Landing Point. That's one of the lookouts. There's a, a, a place on the way up to Christian's Cave. You just go along the eco trail and it's right there. That's called lookout, where people would be there to look out. They look out from up Garnet's Ridge. But ship landing point, because ship landing point would see um, quite a ways round to the southeast and um, also northeast and north to the northwest. And so that, that area is always being tended to where they, they would check out. And the first um, ship that came in, the Topaz, in 1808, where, when it came in, the children of the bounty have never seen a ship and they called it a pafta. They they came running to to John Adams 
and say, Papa, there's a pathter out there. Got one pathter out there coming in. Pathter means a table for drying arrow, the flower of the arrow. So it, it's a table for drying vegetables. And, and so they saw it and they say the pathter is upside down, which means the table is upside down and the mass looked like the legs of the table. The, the stricter rules came in when Joshua Hill took over. Yeah. And, and then um, when they left the island and then they came back, there, there was other people who, who came. There was John uh, Evans, John Buffett. John Buffett was one who came. And then later George Han Nobbs. Um, and George Han Nobbs is a preacher as well and and so they they help the community to 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 form and and um john buffett you know he married married an island girl and so did john evans and uh, george hanobs you know he they married but when pitcairn became too small to feed the 298 people the population had grown by then john adams to uh, Ma Tua, you know they have finally passed away and and so in 1856 with the permission they had asked um they had asked queen victoria for help by then people are traveling to england and back and forth and so they were able to write letters and and send it and the ships were coming more and more frequent in the school they were taught like reading writing and arithmetic very basic then from there um more missionaries started to come come through and in 1886 the um, seventh day adventist and john i Tay, to the island and that that's when it all changed from the Church of England to Seventh-day Adventist and of course by then um, because the Polynesian culture came down through the dance the chanting the the making of tapa is one example where they get together and they chant and they 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 pound the tapa the celebrations of of bounty day on the 23rd of january started in 1791 the women decided they they were going to celebrate the bounty day every year it's been done since 1791 all the dancing the chanting has been wiped out by the missionaries and um the other side of um our polynesian culture the the mana the the gods the yeah all, all that has been taboo for us yeah but some of us believe some of us believe the marais or we call it melee it, it's our spirits you know our tapunas spirits uh, are still with us we, we still believe well i believe a lot of them would look at me and say oh it's a lot of hui but yeah i believe because some places here if i'm here i can still feel the spirit it's the same the very first time I picked up Mawatua's e'e, the beta of the tapa cloth. The very first time, because I had packed it away in the shed, and I, I was so scared to lose it. I had packed it away, and I had only used my e'e that I had made from wood. But then I had taught the children how to make tapa. And um, three years ago, we held the first exhibition here in the hall. Exhibition ever in art. 
here in the hall and I went into the shed in the place I had locked away this beautiful two beautiful air -air, and I took it out and I placed it in the middle of the hall on the table on a piece of tapa that Kimiora had made that Karika had made that Bradley had made and and I put it there and one day I was out here pounding away and I picked up this eh -eh, and I shall I use it shall I not shall I use it shall I not and I picked it up and I I had this gorgeous smile on my face must be gorgeous I looked at mum and she said it's different I said yes and I feel as though Mawatua is telling me to use it so I was so excited that I I told my grandniece Tarika she she is a believer of making tapa I said come 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 and do one for you and she pounded one for her using Mawatua's air -air. and that's the sort of feeling, yes, the spirits of our tukuna is still with us. Art means expressing the spirit of Hitia or River River, the spirit of Pitka. I'm just the tool. It's 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 just me expressing the life of Pitka. Looking at other people's art, I have an appreciation of how they would look at certain things they are doing, cer certain music that they're trying to express, and I, I really admire and enjoy a broad variety of the different arts, and um, but I, I'm always very conscious of of the artwork that um, people express using things closer to nature that that those are, are the favorite types of art I do but I do admire the the modern art as well so I, I've got a very um, broad imagination for for everyone the, the artwork that I saw in, in Rotterdam, you know, the, the artwork I saw in Switzerland, in Hawaii, in, 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 um, in the States, in New Zealand, in Tahiti, you know, all, all in Japan, all, all these different artwork, it, you know, it really inspired me to, to um, work with, with what I have here and it, it makes me appreciate who I am by looking at other people by listening listening to some of the music listening to the words of some of the songs watching some of the artwork that's that's made by filmmaking and and things like that it is a very broad spectrum but it really makes me appreciate life more Quite often I would be, like in Auckland, in New Zealand, I, I probably just walking down the, the road and I, I see somebody has put something in their, their front yard. And it could be just a, a compilation of, of, of logs and rocks and stuff like that. But the perspective of, of looking at at this, you know, it could be somebody just dumped something but I, I can see oh yeah there's a dog in there or, or there's a lizard in there or something like that and that's the type of stuff that really gets my attention but I do appreciate going to museums to art galleries um, to private um, art exhibitions um, in seeing things um, one of the things that re one of the ones that really struck me was a, an art exhibition in in New Zealand that I went to, and it's all garbage, you know. It's it's just people have picked up garbage, 
and it's just the way that they they put it together and so that that was fascinating for me and uh, I really enjoyed and I spent with my friend a few hours just wandering around looking at junk looking at garbage but it's it's the way it's done you know it, it's fascinating yeah one thing that you can take away with you is is that we are still a caring community and it it, it is in our dna you know it, it'll always come but to take away um the spirit of pitkern and I, I don't know how else to express it but um it's difficult for me to say what you can take away from Pitcairn, but I just hope that you have enjoyed and have experienced not only the taste of Pitcairn, but how we are and 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 um, how we survive all these years, and we are willing to fight, and um, maybe that's a strong word, but to keep going on, to going on to make sure that Pitcairn is still here Pitya or river river still lives and um we we welcome anyone who who wants to come and visit and even to live 